Hey guys, um, we are going to start lesson 18 today. It's module 7, lesson 18. So um, we have much to um, to go through. Uh, let's get started, okay? We're going to go on the whiteboard um, today and work out some um, perimeter uh, problems, okay? All right, let's get started, okay guys? All right, come on over. So today is lesson 18 and it's module 7. And this is the, we were finding parameter. And the parameter is, we're, what, what we're focusing on today is um, constructing rectangles from a given number of unit squares to determine uh, the parameter, okay? That's what we're going to focus on today. All right, um, let's get into some warm-up activities um, before we actually find the parameter. We're going to look at find the unknown factor and factors and then we're going to look at drawing a tape diagram and then we get into the the um the practice okay all right let's hit the ground running here so we're focusing on finding the unknown factor okay let's look at these these four um different multiplication problems we have one times blank equals six two times blank equals six 3 times blank equals 6, and 6 times blank equals 6. We just need to fill in the blank um, to complete the equation, okay? Let's go. So, 1 times what give us 6? 1 times 6, yes, good job. 1 times 6. And 2 times what gives you 6? 2 times a number gives you 6. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3, 2 times 3 gives you 6. And then the next one is 3 times blank gives you 6. If 2 times 3 gives you 6, then therefore, if you switch it around, 3 times 2 will also give you 6. And then the next one is 6 times 1. If 1 times 6 gives you 6, then even if you switch it around, you still get the same product or the same answer. Okay, so 6 times 1 will give you 6. So let's uh, re let's um, go over this. Um, 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. And 6 times 1 is 6. Okay, and that is finding the missing factor. We can also do um, another one with... Um, Let's do it with 8, okay? So let's say 1 times blank equals 8. 2 times blank equals 8. 4 times blank equals 8. And the last one is 8 times blank equals 8. Okay, let's go through this really quickly. Um, 1 times what give us 8? How many groups of 1 give you 8? And it's 8 groups. So 1 times 8 is 8. 2 groups of what gives you 8? 2 times 4, yes. And if 2 times 4 gives you 8 right here, then therefore 4 times 2, if you switch them around, 4 times 2 will also give you 8. And here is 8 times 1 will give you 8 because 1 times 8 gives you 8. So 8 times 1 will give you 8. Okay? Let's do another one with, um, with 9. 1 times blank equals 9. 3 times blank equals 9. And 9 times blank equals 9. Okay, let's figure out these um, these answers, the factors, okay? 1 times what gives you 9? 1 group of what? 1 group of 9, yes. And 3 times what gives you 9? 3 groups of 3 gives you 9. And 9 times 1, because 1 times 9 gives you 9, so 9 times 1 will give you 9. So you have three different um, ways of representing factors here of 9. 9 is a factor, 3 is a factor, and uh, of course 9 or 1 is a factor of 9. Also for this one here, the first one, 
you have 6 is a factor of 6, 3 is a factor of 6, 2 is a factor of 6, and of course 1 is a factor of 6. Over here we have um, different factors. 8 is a factor of 8, 4 is a factor of, um, of 8, 2 is a factor of 8, and 1 is a factor of 8. Okay, so those are different factors, finding the factors of the product. These numbers that are equal to, they're referred to as product. Factor multiplied by factor will give you product. Factor multiplied by factor will give you a product. Okay, factor multiplied by factor will give you a product. All right, um, let's get into drawing the tape diagram all right, let's get into drawing tape diagrams. Now we have on the board, we have two in one of the little compartment of the tape diagram, and we have 14 at the top right here. So it's, this is just one unit with two, but we need to represent an entire unit of 14. So let's, this is very incomplete, by the way, the tape diagram is incomplete, and we're gonna make it complete, okay? Now, let's go ahead and represent the, the units so that it's completed. So we have two right here. We need how many more in order to represent um, a total of 14? We have two here. And so we need, um, let's see, two, we need two here, two here, two, so we, so we need more units. So two, four, let me draw this all the way down here to come see if I can complete it. Two, four, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So somewhere there would be about 14. And let's draw this one and complete it right down here. Okay. And then let's complete the unit, each unit, to make sure that everything lines up with the first one. Okay. And because we have two in this unit, we need to put two in the other ones as well. All right, let's see if we get our 14 here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So we have 14 here. Now, we could draw it like this, or we could use multiplication problem in order to get our 14. 2 times what gives you 14? So we could have blank times 2 equal 14. Blank times 2 equal 14. What times 2 will give us 14? And the answer is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 twos. So it's 7 twos will give you 14. Or 7 times 2 will give you 14. Could we also write it um, backwards? We could, could we switch this around? And it will give us, will it give us 14? Let's try. 2 times 7 equals 2 times 7 will it give us 14 absolutely it will give you 14 so no matter which way we turn it no matter which way we switch it around we will always get um, 14 now this switch whether you put 7 times 2 or 2 times 7 it has a name it's called commutative property C O M M U commutative property. So that's referred to as commutative property. Okay, and this is a commutative property of multiplication. It doesn't matter which way you switch the factors, you're always going to get the same product. So you can have 8 times 1, similar to the first activity, is equal to 8. Or you can have 1 times 8 is the same as 8. Okay? You can also have 2 times 4 equals 8. Or 4 times 2. This is the commutative property. It doesn't matter which way you switch them around. You're going to get the same answer, the same product. Okay? That's commutative property. And the, in this case, it's commutative property of multiplication. Okay? Um, let's do another one just for fun. Um, you could do 6 times 3 equals 18. Yep. 
Or you could have 3 times 6 is the same 18. That is the commutative property. Okay, so commutative property suggests that if you switch the numbers around, the factors around, you still get the same answer. No matter what position the factors are in, you still get the same answer. Okay, all right, let's dig into some um, perimeter. Okay, the perimeter of some um, objects or diagrams. Okie dokie. Alrighty, let's go to the perimeter of this object. So we have an object here. We're finding the perimeter and after we're finished, we're going to find the area of the object as well. It's very important that you know the difference between the perimeter and the area of an object. The perimeter is the distance around the object and the area is the square units within the object itself. Okay, so that's the difference. Let's look at the perimeter um, first, okay? We're gonna talk about the difference in a little while again. So this side has how many square units on the length? One, two, three, four, four units. And this side has two units. Okay, all right, now let's find the perimeter. And perimeter is, remember, is a distance around there. P equals distance around the object. Now what is the distance around this object? The distance is this 4 plus this 2 plus 4 plus 2. That is the distance around the object, okay? So P perimeter is equal to 2, okay, plus 4, because it's 4 right across there, plus 2 again on the other side, plus 4 again on the top side. So we have 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 4 equals um, 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 2 plus 4 is 6. And you have 6 plus 6 is 12. Now in this case, we don't have any particular units. We don't have any rectangles or inches or yards or feet. We only have units to, for this example. So we'll put 12 units as the answer. Okay? And that is the distance around the object. Is That is the parameter. All right. Now, what is the area of the same object? The area is a little bit different from the perimeter because the area is the square units within the object. So if you have the area, you need to find out how many square units inside the object or what the object covers. So if you put this object down, how many square units is it covering? Um, let's look at area. Area is equal to square units. And then in this case, it will be total square units. It's basically the area. is the total square units inside the object. We can count the square units in this case to find the area, such as this is one square unit, two square units, three, four, five, six, seven, eight square units. Okay? So in this particular shape, we have eight square units. So it's eight square units. And that will be the area. Now, you can also use a formula to find the area. What is the formula? Area, finding area, the formula is area equals length, which is the long side, multiplied by the short side, which is the width. Length times width equals what is the length on this particular shape, which is the long side. The long side is four units. One, two, three, four units. And that's why we put four right there. So the length of it is four units multiply by what is the short side? This side is two units. So it's multiplied by two. Okay, 
Now, the area length multiplied by width equals 4 times 2 is 8. And because there are square units, you have square S-Q-U-A-R-E, square units on your answer. There's no particular unit such as um, inches, yards, feet, or centimeter, or kilometer. So you will not put any particular unit. You just put the word unit on there. But you cannot forget the square because they're all square units. They're equal on either side, all sides, okay? So that's the difference between the, the perimeter and the area of an object, okay? Let's try another one just for fun because you guys are loving this, okay? Let's try another one, okay? Finding perimeter and the area. So I refined it a little bit. Now let's look at the shape and see how many units on either side. Um, you have one, two, three, four on this side. So it's still four here. Units. And on this side, we have one, two, three. So this is three units. Okay. And then if, remember, if this is four, then there is going to be four. And if this is three over here, here is going to be three too. Let's find the perimeter first. So perimeter is equal to the distance around the object. Okay, remember. And let's look at the distance around the object. We have three here, three units. So three units plus four units plus one, two, three units plus one, two, three, four units. So let's go ahead and add these all up. One, um, three plus four is seven plus three plus four is another seven. And then seven times seven or it's not seven times seven, two times seven or seven plus seven is 14. What is it? In terms of units, is just the word units because there's no particular unit. Okay, remember. Now let's go ahead and find the area of this same figure here. I'm going to put area down here. So remember, the perimeter is 14 units. Area is equal to length multiplied by width. Or if you want to count the units within the shape. Remember the area is a, the amount, the number of units, square units within the shape itself, the total square units. So let's go ahead and you can count them or you can use your formula, which is multiplying the length by the width. This is the length, the long side, this is the width, okay, the short side. So let's go and count them. One square unit, two, three square unit, four square units, five square units, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve square units. Okay? So your area, just to be quick right here, area is twelve square SQ units. Okay? Now let's go ahead and use our multiplication skills to find the area. The length Multiply by the width. Long side multiply by short side. Long side is four units. Short side is three units. So we multiply them. Okay. Four times three is 12. Notice the 12 square units because it's just the word units. So it's 12 square units. And that is the area of the particular figure right here, the shape. And this is the perimeter of the particular shape right here. Okay? Notice the difference in the perimeter and the area. See? With the perimeter, you do addition of the sides. You add the sides together. Notice the area. You multiply one side by another side. Or you basically count the square units inside of it. And the difference is also in the answer. With area, you always include the word square, units, square. In the parameter, you never put the word square units in there because the length of the sides are not square units. It's just the length of, of the sides. Okay?
All right, let's do one last one and then you get into some practice, all right? Okie dokie again. So this is a mighty big one, bigger than the other ones that we have done so far. Okay, let's count the the sides. So we're finding the perimeter and the area. Let's count the, the length of the sides. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. So this side is eight units. And the other side over here, one, two, three. And this side is three units. Okay. Now let's go ahead and find the perimeter first, and then of course the area. Let's draw a line down here to separate these two. We're gonna call one side the perimeter, and let's call one the other side area, A-R-E-A. -E okay, so let's go ahead for the perimeter first. So remember, perimeter is the distance around the object. So eight plus three, Plus 8, of course, because this is 8, so therefore that's going to be 8, plus 3. So P is equal to um, 8, 8, this 8, plus 3, plus 8, and then plus this side, which is 3. And let's go ahead and add them all up. 8 plus 3 is 8, 9, 10, 11, plus 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, and then let's go ahead and add the 11s. Two 11s, of course, will give you 22, or 11 plus 11 is 22. And what is the unit? It's just units. So it's 22 units, okay? Let's go ahead and find the area of the same object. Remember, area is the total number of square units within the object. It is not the distance around the object. Okay, area is equal to, let's count all the square units. One, two, three square units. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So the total square units are twenty-four square units. Okay, all right, now let's go ahead and find the, the area using the formula. Area is equal to length multiplied by width. What is the length? The length of it is 8, because that's the long side, is 8 multiplied by what is the short side is 3. So it's 8 times 3. And what is 8 times 3, young scholars? 8 times 3 is... 24 good job and remember it's 24 square units now if this was centimeters it would have been square centimeters if this was um yards it would have been square yards if this was um kilometers it would have been square kilometers if this was inches it would have been square inches right here on the area okay the area is measured in square units. The perimeter is not measured in square units. It's measured in only units because remember, the perimeter is just the length of the sides all together, the total length of the sides. All right. Um, I hope you get the gist of it or the total um, understanding of all of these. So we're going to get into the um the work now um it is your time to do some work so here goes i'm gonna put some um images up and you can go ahead and pause the video each time and solve them while you go through these okay all right have fun guys have fun with all of this okay so you're going to find the perimeter and also the area of these shapes okay Remember, you're going to pause the video each time you um, you try to solve the, the shape, finding the perimeter and the area of each of them. Let's go. So number one, you're finding the perimeter first and then the area of this shape. You can pause the video and then find both of them. Then this one, finding the area and the perimeter. 
of this shape pause the video and this one same thing perimeter and area of the shape and this one perimeter and area and this one take a look there's no division there's no partition in the shape anymore it's just the units but you treat it just as how you would treat the other ones okay pause the video and find the perimeter of the shape and the area and also this one and this is the last one here find the perimeter and also the area Okie dokie. That's very good, guys. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much, guys, for going through this lesson. I know it's long and you're comparing two things, the perimeter and the area of shapes. And you're finding the, the, those two things. But I want to encourage you to continue working hard and um, doing your best, okay? I'm um, hoping everything is all right. Um, you can reach out to me, make comments um, below uh, about um, these concepts, okay? And um, just reach out, let me know how you're doing. Um, and also we can continue uh, the, the conversation, okay? Do well as much as possible and stay safe uh, during this time, okay? Have a great time. Um, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.